Hello everyone and welcome once again to the newest installment of the amazing Atari Aficionado. So I am very excited because I have quite the episode for you guys. I finally have a nice giant haul of uh, new Atari games and just new pickups and as well as even more manuals because I know you guys love looking at the manuals. So, let's just dive right in. As always, I just like starting with these because they're always on the top of the pile. I have uh, some more M Network games, aka games made by Mattel. Uh, this one does not say Mattel on it. Um, but I'm assuming it probably is. The weird thing though is it says, all it says is 1982 Korea. Uh, it's just football. Simple two-player football, uh, whereas a lot of times the um, the usual ones that say M Network on them, uh, they actually say 1982 USA. Uh, so the year is the same, but one says Korea and one says USA. I don't know if this was like Korea only, or like I, I don't know. It's just weird. But anyhow, and then this one is uh, Astro Bat Blast. Um, I had this already. Uh, this was actually one of the first, probably one of the earliest ones that I've ever picked up. And I had accidentally cleaned the label with bleach and it bleached the label and fucked it up. So I obviously had to get a replacement. So I now have Astro Blast once again. The cool thing is this label was in better condition anyhow. So it was kind of a, you know, surprise win. Um... Then, of course, here is Adventure. Uh, this is just another, already had Adventure, but this is a variant. This is the Sears uh, and Roebuck Telegames uh, system version. So now I have that. Um, speaking of Sears television games, um, I finally acquired Baseball. I don't believe I had this because, like I said in a previous video, um, I'm not really going out of my way to collect... Um, I'm, I'm not really necessarily trying to collect sports games. So, uh, here are a few more Sears telegames. Uh, Race and Target Fun. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, nothing too crazy there with these ones. Um, Target Fun is just like a shooting game. This is actually kind of cool. I, I, I found Target Fun a little addictive. Uh, and then, of course, Race is just your standard racing game. So, got a couple uh, new ones with those. Uh, Defender. Obviously, I already had this. Uh, at some point, I will go through all of my games and show you guys the differences in the variants. Uh, like I said, I'm just kind of showing you as I pick up stuff. So, at some point down the road, I may do a, a video specifically showing you all the different variants. Um, but just for the video's sake, I don't want it to be too long. I'm just showing you what I picked up. So this is the Sears Telegames uh, version of Defender. And then I start jumping into the Atari games, of course. Uh, now these ones are really strange because uh, if you look at them, they're obviously very big. The fonts on the bottoms are huge. There's also numbers in front of them. Uh, combat has zero one. Surround has 41. Um, I don't know what the significance of the numbers are. I don't really know why these look so different. They might have just been uh, either early ones that came out or maybe they were part of a set. Like maybe you could buy 40 games or 50 games or something. Like I don't know. It's really, really bizarre. But another version of Combat and another version of Surround. It's kind of scary because I just keep coming across new var you know new variants again and again and again so uh and then this game was just really really random called math grand prix uh essentially it's a very 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 early uh educational game so to speak uh you answer math questions and you move your race car driver every time you answer a correct question you move further every time you incorrectly answer your car doesn't move and then the other driver can pass you or obviously win so that's kind of cool this would have been great to have had as a kid because i'm not gonna lie i struggled with math because i just 
big part of it was it was boring. And if I had learned math probably like this, I probably would have been a lot more into it. So I could actually get behind some of those educational games for sure. Um, jumping back to Sears Television, here is Sears Bowling. And then here we go. Here's a variant. Here is Atari's version of bowling. So if you were to pick it up for the Atari 2600, it would look like that. And then this is what the Sears telegames. And for some reason, I said this before in like many videos, I don't know what the significance of these numbers are. Um, but it's just all the telegames have what random numbers on them. And I don't always really know what they refer to. But I guess maybe they just numbered them as, as, as they went along. But yeah, really, really strange. So, <laughs> there are those. I probably need a coffee. Um, oh, okay. Jumping back to the numbers. Here is Street Racer. Or also known as 12 Street Racer. Uh, like I said, I don't know what that number's all about. Really weird. Uh, Othello, of course. I'm pretty sure I picked up an Othello in the last <laughs> episode. The, this is literally another variant of that. Uh, and then we start getting into the really cool stuff. So here, uh, this is Freeway. So I, I got an, a new Activision game, of course. I just realized I really need to clean these out. But got an Activision game there. Pretty cool. Uh, here is Wizard of War. One of my favorite games so far. Uh, labels very banged up. There's even a little bit of marker on there. Uh, this is one of those ugly CBS electronics. You know, it looks like rations from World War II. You know, this is this is what the soldiers would get, and they'd open it up, and there'd be a little cigarette and a little pouch of protein, little pouch of vegetables, you know, a little Capri Sun, and, you know, maybe, like, a condom and, like, a Playboy and, like, whatever else they got and, and like, some bullets. But, like, that's crazy, you know, that, uh, that they went with that color scheme. So, but oh, this is an awesome game. Uh, this will be getting its own review at some point. Uh, basically, I call it a top-down shooter, I guess, where you're at the bottom of the screen and you're firing up towards item or you know enemies and things, and lots of fun. Very cool. Totally recommended. Uh, here I have this is Spectra Visions, uh, Gangster Alley. Very excited about this. This is the first Spectra Vision. Uh, game that I have uh, if you look really close you can see a weird kind of grainy neat looking thingamabobber there um, it's, it's like some kind of logo but it's like raised and uh, it almost feels like braille it's really crazy and this is Hong Kong of course Hong Kong fooey but anyway um yeah, just another crazy game where you're literally shooting out against other gangsters in an alley. So, it's pretty, pretty basic. Okay, up next, uh, I got some moon games coming your way. So, here is Moon Patrol by Atari. Here's a really cool looking one with the silver label. So, we got Moon Patrol. I'm almost certain I did not have this game yet. I have to double check. Pretty sure I did not. Uh, lots of fun. You're literally a little moon sweeper thingy that, or moon buggy that drives across the moon. And, uh, you gotta, you know, jump up and avoid obstacles. It's actually very, um, it's like an early version of that Nintendo game where you're a rolling along a side scroller. I think it's called something blaster, blaster master. I think that's the game for the NES freaks out there. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's Blaster Master. This is literally Blaster Master, but like with not as great um, music and definitely not as great graphics, but still a lot of fun. But the essential game mechanics are there. And then staying with the moon theme, I have Moon Sweeper. Uh, this game uh, is a little boring. You're basically this little guy on the moon and you're sweeping it. And there's like dirt everywhere. And I'm just joking, that's actually not the game. <laughs> uh, Moon Sweeper was another uh, shooting game, if I'm not mistaken. The only problem with this one is it's just a little too nuts and a little too crazy. And there's a little too much going on with like the firing and the aliens and stuff. 
Um, but it looks really cool. And it's another game by Imagic, and I did not have this, and I had to pick it up, and I definitely need to clean this one out. So, <laughs> anyway, those were the games. Okay, as always, I'm going to try to wham-bam, thank you ma'am, through these, um, you know, manuals. But here, I do not have this game, but at least I have the manual now. It is Enduro by Activision. Of course, they have the black and white kind of checkers for the flag, so... Pretty darn neat looking manual. And they got a little map there. So I like it. It's cool. And that's 1983. Uh, of course, here is Video Olympics. I have this game. I did not have the manual for it. So that is that. Uh, here is a Breakout, of course. One of the games that you need the paddles for. Uh, essentially like block breaker or uh, you know the game for um, for the Game Boy I always forget the name of it with Mario in it and uh, alleyway fucking alleyway I always forget that but yeah essentially alleyway okay uh, then we have uh, video pinball which I have this so now I have the manual to that that's pretty cool uh, Pitfall, that was a big one. Believe it or not, I did not have the manual for Pitfall. So now I have the manual for Pitfall. Once again, this is also by Activision 1982. Pitfall Harry. And you can join Pitfall Harry's Explorers Club. That's pretty cool. And David Crane. There he is. There's old, good old David Crane. There's the guy that made Pitfall. So that's kind of neat. Uh, here I have Skydiver. I do not have this game, uh, but I have the manual. So obviously you got to get that game now. Pretty neat looking if you want to take a look at that again up close. Pretty crazy. All right. Circus Atari. Pretty self-explanatory. I do have this one. So there you guys go. Another game that requires the paddle controllers. We got football. There it is, football by Atari, 1982, of course, respectively. Here's some football pictures. This is real sports football. So, it's pretty intense. There's some more football action for the football fans out there. Football. So, nice. All right, and then we got ourselves Vanguard. This one's a real thick manual. This one's crazy. Another one produced and made by Atari. Oh yeah, here we go. Check out these pictures. That's beautiful. That's a beaut. That's pretty darn cool. Look at these screenshots. I love it. I love it. Absolutely awesome. So, there you guys go. Some more cool stuff. And finally, uh, I have the uh, Sears and Roebuck uh, telegames version of Pac-Man. The manual is black. Uh, the one for um, the regular Atari, it's just white. It's just a white manual. So, Obviously, some cute pictures. Of Pac-Man and the ghosts inside. Unfortunately, the game looked nothing like that. But And then, of course, you have your game matrix. And there you guys go. This was a very awesome episode, obviously. Um, I showed some great stuff. And, uh, you know, just to reiterate, you know, I've shown you guys, you know, boxes in the past. And... Uh... And I've shown you, you know, lots of games. And obviously, you know, here's an example of boxes I've showed you. Plus, I just love showing this box again and again. I don't know what it is. The Pac-Man box is just so cool. But, obviously, it's been a while since I've shown you guys a box. Well, surprise, surprise, I have something for you guys. I have, as I smash into the camera with the box, I have a box here. Boom! This is the Atari 
Video computer system keyboard controllers. That is right. This is for use with video computer system game programs. There were certain games that you needed this for, which I think I have one or two. I probably should have did the research before I did this video. Uh, <laughs> but uh, either way, um, I will uh, show those games uh, later on uh, if I do have any. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know if I do. I think I might. But either way, I was just too excited to show you guys this. Because not only do I have the box. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. He's doing it. Oh, shit. I got the keypad controllers that slide apart and slide together. That's pretty cool. It's like the Nintendo Switch. Before the Nintendo Switch. Like five decades before the Nintendo Switch. And it even made that noise. You seen that crazy? That's great, dude. So, I got a Nintendo Switch right here. Awesome stuff. But yeah, these are really cool. There would be like little overlays that you would like pop in there. And you know, they'd come apart, you know, I think for like two player games and stuff like that. And it's just really neat looking and it's Atari. And like, you know, you can like wear them. You can wear them to a party and like look nice. You know, like you look like a Star Trek, you know, Trekkie or something. But like, it's great. You know, it's, it's awesome. And Atari was like super innovative and ahead of its time. And you could literally program games. Uh, there was certain, certain, I believe, like math games and other educational games and stuff that you would need these for. Um, not many games required them. But like I said, um, in order to, you know, use some of the pr basic programming, you know, cartridges that they had and things of that nature... Um, you would need this for and I believe Atari you could even do like basic computer functions and like calculations and stuff so I believe these would come in handy for that too so anyhow there you guys go that was just kind of a little bonus something fun something cool that I thought you guys would like so there you have it from 1978 I got the box you know, it's a little, little, slightly banged up, a little dirty. You know, I cleaned it as best I could. You know, you, you can't, you can't hose it down, you know, or else it would disintegrate. But I cleaned it as best I could. So, there you guys go. This has been the amazing Atari Aficionado bringing you a slightly longer episode. Only because I had so many cool things to show you. So, thank you so much. And I'll see you next time.